Hey, what's up everybody? I hope you're well today. I wanna to talk to you about ambient occlusion. So we have this model, and this is from our Earth and Globes pack, which has 55 different Earth, Globes, maps, and solar pieces to it. It's really cool. So if we do a render, it's pretty flat. There's not a whole lot of shadowing. Uh, these white pieces are pretty flat. So I really like ambient occlusion. I think it adds a lot to your scene. So you can just go to Effect Ambient Occlusion, and this will add ambient occlusion to your entire scene. And right away you can see that we have some nice definition, there's a lot of shadowing in the creases, looks just 100% better. Well, this also adds a lot of render time, and you don't have a lot of flexibility because it adds it to your entire scene. So what if you have a model that looks really good, so you don't need ambient occlusion, but if we do this render again, first of all you can see that it renders a lot faster, but on the bottom of this there's no grounding, it looks like it's just floating in midair. So let's say that we wanted to put ambient occlusion only on one element of your scene. Let's go to our diffusion channel and turn that on. Diffusion is changing the lightness and the darkness of your material based on what you put in here. So we're going to put in a texture under effects and there is your ambient occlusion. If we go into our ambient occlusion and then we go back to our render settings and we add it here, you can see that we have the exact same settings in that uh, diffusion channel effect and in the overall uh, ambient occlusion. So it's basically just adding ambient occlusion to that individual uh, texture. So now if we hit render, you can see that we have the shadowing underneath our model and it looks like it's sitting on that studio floor, but it renders really fast and we don't have it calculating for all the pieces on the model. So let's say that we want the ocean to also have ambient occlusion. Just click on diffusion, go to effects, ambient occlusion, render that guy again. So now you can see that the ocean has these really nice shadowed parts, uh, but it's rendering really fast because we're not calculating for all these trees and the white parts. So uh, this is great if you have a hero object, but everything in the background, you don't need to calculate AO for. So you could just uh, put your AO on the hero object. Another reason this comes in handy is to have more control over the contrast. So if we have ambient occlusion, we have this option for contrast, and that's basically just kicking up the intensity. So if we put that at 75%, it looks pretty ridiculous. Um, so it's really nice to be able to have more control over it. So if we go to our uh, floor, and we change that one to 75%, the other ones are going to stay the same. So that way you can dial in the ambient occlusion, uh, the strengths of different parts of your model. So that's really nice too. Here's a tip for adding ambient occlusion to a bunch of materials really quickly. Instead of going to each of them individually, just open one. And then down here, just highlight the ones that you want to have ambient occlusion. And if we highlight all of them, you can see that we have multiple values selected up here. Just check on diffusion and then go to uh, effects ambient occlusion. Now if we look at these individually, they all have it added. So that's just a quick way to add it to multiple ones at the same time. So there you go, that's a quick way to customize your ambient occlusion so that you can have faster render times and just have a bit more control over it. I hope you guys find that useful. Thanks again for checking out the Pixel Lab. We'll talk to you next time.